Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Tech Mobile More. Today I wanted to just talk about some leaks and rumors about the upcoming iPhone 13. Now all the information here I have kind of collected just by uh, just reading websites, looking at different articles. I know a lot of this information still hasn't been confirmed about this phone, so I don't think anything has been set in stone for now. So I'm just going to go over what we expect the iPhone 13 to have. Now starting with the website Mac Rumors, they actually had some really good information on the iPhone. So they think that the iPhone 13 will come in four sizes and it'll be released sometime in fall 2021. So around September 2021. And the four sizes are pretty much going to be like uh, this year's most likely, you know, if Apple continues to do what they did this year. So for example, this year they had the 6.1 inch iPhone 12, the 6.1 inch iPhone 12 Pro, which was a little higher end, the 6.7 inch iPhone 12 Pro Max, which I believe was their highest end device, and the iPhone 12 mini, which was 5.4 inches. So we could expect Apple, or at least it's rumored that Apple will follow the same uh, same setup. Uh, this The notch might be smaller. Again, this is coming from Mac rumors. The size of the notch might decrease next year. Again, this is coming from the website Mac rumors. Um, as far as the shape of the notch, I couldn't find any information about that. Um, I think one of the websites said that uh, the notch will look the same. It'll just be a bit smaller, but that's always good. You know, Apple does have, I think, the worst notch out of all the phones, you know, like Samsung phones just have a little hole on the dis in the display, but Apple's is like an actual notch. So we'll see what happens. Speaking of the notch, there will be Face ID. Just like in uh, the iPhone 12s, the iPhone 13s will have Face ID, and it's rumored that they will also have Touch ID. They will have an in-display fingerprint scanner, or at least uh, they're rumored to have an in-display fingerprint scanner. And also the displays are going to be 120 hertz ProMotion displays. Now this is what Mac rumors called it, ProMotion. I don't know if that's just what they think it's going to be called or what Apple is actually calling it. At least Apple is finally uh, developing or producing 120 hertz displays. The iPhone 12s were all 60 hertz. Samsung, I believe, is in their second generation of 120 hertz displays already. So Apple's a bit behind, but they do have very smooth 60 hertz. Like I remember comparing an iPhone, just scrolling to like uh, Samsung before on the 120 hertz displays, and I always thought the iPhone was pretty smooth you know or smoother than the Samsung's but now with the 120 Hertz the Samsung's are very smooth so we'll see maybe Apple will feel even smoother because they already have it down uh, as far as the chip goes there's not much information about the chip but again this website Mac rumors which is a really good website I think um, if you are into iPhones they've predicted or at least uh, yeah they basically wrote an article predicting what they think the new chip will be or at least the features it will have so this year the iphone 12 had the a14 so most likely next year it'll be the a15 chip and uh, according to mac rumors they think and again this is just uh predictions that the website is making they think iphone pro will have a five nanometer uh chip just like this year so that's not going to change the chips will have more transistors and will be faster. I'm just telling you guys this for those of you who uh, who are into this stuff. So like I said, this website believes that the A15 chip will have 15 to 20% more transistors than the A14. They think the Geek Geekbench score next year will be 1800. This year, Apple was around 1500. And they also believe the multi-core score in Geekbench will probably be somewhere around 4,600 to 4,800. Currently, the A14 is around 4,000. But yeah, so expect, you know, some improvements, steady improvements over this year's GPU. Might also have LDDR5 RAM. Again, this is something companies like Samsung have already, have already implemented in their phones, but Apple hasn't. So maybe next year we'll see the faster RAM. 
all together it's just expect the more efficient better chip probably going to have better battery life you know just like every year but exciting stuff apple already their chips are faster than anything you find in android so you know it's going to be a good chip regardless now there's been a lot of rumors i'm sure you guys heard that apple is planning on ditching all ports apparently according to mac rumors at least this isn't true and apple will continue using the lightning port and they're not switching to USB-C either so don't expect that to happen it'll be the same old lightning port which you have to buy specifically for your iPhone or whatever else Apple uses the lightning port for again I think you could tell that I'm not a big Apple guy now some of the most exciting rumors I think have to do with the camera so Apple is finally going to have a portrait mode for video so it's a portrait video mode and for those of you who are who know what portrait photos are it's when you know the background is blurry but the subject is in focus you know there's bokeh in the background and it gives the photo a very professional high quality look like it was shot on an expensive camera this feature will bring it to video as well now my galaxy s21 ultra and even the other Galaxy S21s already have this feature. Um, doesn't work very well on the Samsungs. I, the background blur isn't as pronounced as the photos. The photos look nice, but just in video mode, it's not very well implemented. Of course, that'll probably change in the future, and Apple's might be, you know, Apple might hit it out of the park, you know, right away with theirs. So we gotta wait and see, but either way, it brings phone camera technology a little bit closer to DSLRs and, you know, more expensive cinema cameras. The most exciting thing, however, is that at least it's rumored that the Pro models will have ProRes. Now, ProRes is valued by cinematographers because it's a very high quality file and it can stand up to heavy post-processing. So for those of you who are into color grading and just doing heavy post-processing, I think this would be a welcome addition to the iPhone lineup and it will make the iPhone video very high quality actually and ProRes is Apple's own video codec so they can implement it the only thing is um, it's still not quite sure it's still not quite clear which iPhone models will get ProRes the website Mac rumors thinks it will only be the higher end models the higher end iPhone models so we got to wait and see but nevertheless it's a uh, it's very exciting news and that's it guys so I just wanted to uh, round up some rumors that you know I've read about and I find pretty exciting and now uh, let you guys know as well please give this video a like if you enjoyed it subscribe to my channel as I will be making more videos such as these and also some some tip videos about uh, technology in general and that's it guys thanks for tuning in talk to you next time peace